Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Curious Competitor Podcast. I'm your host today, NHL defenseman Connor Carrick. Our guest today is Peter Russo. Peter Russo uh, runs his hockey consulting uh, company called PRS, which stands for Practice, Reflect, Simplify. Uh, Peter has spent time uh, coaching most recently with Babson College and Providence College uh, in a team f- uh, format, but now he does a lot more uh, consulting, group consulting, one-on-one consulting with NHLers all the way down through uh, some select youth players. He's based out of the Boston area. Um, he is, as far as I can tell, one of the most purposely thought out, uh, passionately driven hockey people I've been able to meet. There's a there's a certain sort of uh, you know dryness and intensity that can sometimes be drawn uh, to hockey, uh, uh, where a stoic nature is sort of, uh, it's not spoken about, but it's encouraged, right? Be like a duck uh, is a saying that I've had uh, used with me in my career where, you know, maybe under the water, uh, you're, you're working, you know, like a banshee, but, a, but above water, um, you know, no one can tell, right? And so this this stoic sort of uh, be bothered by nothing nature uh, enters into a lot of, uh, rhetoric and hockey, but what I've found is that's more of a, if, if it doesn't come naturally to you, if you aren't naturally that way, at least for me, there's a sort of numbing effect. And so in my work with Peter, uh, full disclosure, I, I am a client. Um, I have found a reconnection uh, to the passion for the game. I have been able to work harder for longer with less uh mental toll or tax. Um, I actually stumbled on this this morning as I'm, I'm doing uh, this intro after the fact uh, with the podcast. And I, I actually didn't know this, the PRS oath. Uh, we, Peter and I, in, in the format we met, we skipped some of the formalities of what might be uh, an initial sort of player-coach relationship. Uh, but I thought this was really cool. Um, cool might be the wrong word, but the PRS oath the right way for the right reasons for a long time with faith and patience, with gratitude and passion. And when I read that, that is at the core of everything uh, of of what Peter and I do on a professional basis. We spend um, great lengths. We, We talk about what we want to do as a player and what we want to train, what I want to train for sure. Uh, but the manner in which we want to go about our work, the how, Um, and the why is something we spend a lot of time about. And I found that to be a great investment of time and energy, something that when you spend time uh, uncovering and getting to, you know, sort of uh, the deeper uh, parts of self with that, um, there's a compounding energetic effect on the other side where uh, it's a a gift that uh, keeps keeps on giving. So with all that said, uh, I wanted to address this podcast as a little bit of a sort of a clean the uh, garage format. Peter is long-winded. I am long-winded. Uh, we both, uh, with that, you know, get a little uh, windy and, and off topic at times in this podcast. But what I found is, you know, sometimes you got to create a mess in order to organize things later. And that's um, what I found to be, you know, a lot of uh, Peter's style uh, in the coaching and in the video work that we do. We actually haven't had a chance to jump on the ice yet as we met in uh, what would be March of last season. Uh, But he helped guide me to, you know, a really strong finish, and I'm grateful for that. Uh, And more importantly, I think as a young man, I'm 27. Peter's a couple years older than me. Uh, He's more well-read than me in everything, you know, from uh, Carl Jung to, you know, um, Buddhist uh, poetry and, and, and sayings and He's a wide-ranging individual, uh, and this is a wide-ranging conversation. Stick with us. This is going to be a two-part series. I'll release uh, just because it ended up being so long. This will be the first one this week, um, and I look forward to uh, releasing the next one and, and hearing what you think. So thank you for joining us wherever you are in the world today. Let's do this. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Curious Competitor Podcast. I'm your host today, Connor Carrick, our guest. Um, 
I got to say, this is probably the first time we've spoken with video. We, we've spent quite a few hours on the phone uh, since mid-March when we met. Our guest today is Peter Russo. He's been a, a hockey coach uh, and now does a little bit more on the personal consulting side. For the last 10 years, he was at, uh, what was it, Babson College, you said? Yep, 1920 season, yep. 1920 and then Providence College before that? 1819, yep. A couple of career years for those programs. Um, we won't get into the stats because this isn't an analytics podcast, but it was good. <laughs> Um, and then we became, I guess, fast acquaintances. I want to use the word friends carefully because there is a player coach relationship there and we don't want to muddy the waters too much, but I, th I think we'd be remiss not to admit that, um, we've connected on a lot of levels ever since, uh, imaginary friend of the podcast, John Hayden, <laughs> and I say imaginary friend cause he's refused to come on all 55 times I've asked him and, uh, I don't know. I'm running out of room, but I'm uh, probably more excited for this particular podcast than maybe any, any that I have. Uh, and and I, I love each and every guest. I don't have favorites except for Russo. And Ooh, a lot of pressure before this um, start. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I know you're a stakes guy. You know, yeah. I've heard you on other podcasts and I know without a proper challenge, you get bored. So um, <laughs> that's true. Where do we go? I mean, I mean, we can, we can talk a little bit about who, you know, who is Peter Russo, uh, who are your influences and, and what has, you know, sort of formulated the person, uh, behind the screen today. We can dip into, I teased it on another podcast, um, where, and, and maybe we can save this for round, you know, two or three, cause I, I do think that each one deserves its own sort of lane. We can talk a little bit about, uh, our work, um, and, maybe what our process is going to look like, um, you know, around the summer. And I know you're a, a very much in the now guy. So it, when you talk about summer plan, it, it previews to future there. Um, I won't uh, continue to ask a multi-pronged question. <laughs> Who's Peter Russo behind the screen today and how do we get well, here? So I, I say, uh, I'd say, well, we should, you know, so you mentioned the, the friend, the, you know, coach player and Tarts was, you know, using friends. You know, friends, it, it makes it a uh, kind of to go back to the language, right? It's like, it's like, well, I don't really know what to call them, right? I get that a lot, but it's we're really we we're humans that have a different role inside the dynamic of our relationship, right? So, mm -hmm. and, and you know, who is Peter Russo? Who the hell cares? Like in the sense of like, it, like you know, in terms of listeners. So, well, I'll, let's use this universally, right? So it's like our work. We can talk about it as a way to where people listening can sort of make it their own, right? Um, because it's really. Again, if we take out some of the semantics, it's really, you know, however I was shaped, it, it's the story, the backstory, I don't think is, would be, is as interesting to anyone but me, right? Because it's like, it's, hard, you, it's one of those things you can't explain because it, it, it happens sort of inside of my head, <laughs> you know? So it's like, it's my, it's the shaping of me. Well, it's is, one of those things I feel like as you're going through it, all you're thinking about, there's like, there's words that come out of your mouth, but all you're thinking about is what not to say. <laughs> You're like, well, that's not relevant. I'm, now I'm talking. I'm going too far back. Um, well, see, I, you know, I, I will also. Oh, that's a good. Well, that's a good little sort of like bumper. I so I guess I could say one thing that I don't do, very, or I'm blessed with a certain naivety where I don't really when I'm talking, I don't think that I don't think a secondary conversation of like, don't oh, don't say that, you know. So I'm very, I'm very raw and authentic, and I, it typically ends up working out um, because. You know, um, I don't get in my own way when I'm doing when I'm doing that. Now, again, there's a there's always a ha with anything there's a a give and a take, right? So that naivety also comes with a uh, you know you, you have to you have to look at it then matter of factly and find a balance. But I would say I don't uh, I don't I don't think too much about what I say. Which <laughs> again, as soon as you start thinking, you'll if if you try to not think about what you say, you'll end up messing up what you say. So it's you can't just do it. Um, it's, Again, a blessing of naivety. So, well, so to use, I guess, phrases uh, that I've heard you lean on um, to catapult the conversation would be, you know, if you pay attention and tell the truth, you never have to remember anything in your life. Mm -hmm. Like, where do you derive that from? And it's obviously you've tipped your hand that that's kind of your going philosophy yeah. <laughs> within the first five minutes. Like, where and 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 how do you use that in your life? Yeah. So. Well, the first thing is, so it, that, cause that kind of goes to memory. Cause what you said, you know, we're talking about memory and learning, right? The first thing is most people, and this is useful for, you know, players listening. They don't understand 
what me- how memory works. It actually works. It's more of a subconscious process. But you know, we're so in our culture, we're we're very we we like to accumulate, right? If we don't have a, a memento, we think we didn't. We're like afraid that we didn't do it, right? If we have nothing to show for something, right? And that includes knowledge. So the problem is we try to grasp for knowledge, but um, memory actually works by if you're again if you're in um if you're in a learning state, right? You're you're not you're not focusing on one thing. You're just you're just focused. We, like there's there's no past and there's no future in that time. But the past, what you know from the past is being subconsciously pushed through. You're just not thinking about controlling that, right? So everything you've learned uh, filters through how it should and applies how it should um, wherever you are. So the, so it's not the, so it's not to say that like knowledge doesn't come with you. It's just it emerges when needed, right? And when you know, and again, I, I would even say in terms of our work, the times where you're, I would say. Your, brilliant, your, your authentic brilliance has come through is when you're not thinking about, when you're not overthinking that part of it, right? Like the Cat in the Hat and James Joyce email, all, like the, to the eagle guy there. Um, that was, you weren't, th- that was, you just fired that off, right? So you weren't overthinking it, but you use like, again, like a really, like a, a really um, sophisticated literary device and then the Cat in the Hat in a three sentence email, right? Um, which is, you know, Again, it's like, well, how, how the hell, how do you get to James Joyce at Cat in the Hat in, in three, you know, in like probably like 12 syllables, right? It's like, one, you know, so um, that's how, now imagine doing that all the time. That's me. <laughs> so, well, and this is, so to, to, I would say that in our relationship, we had quick success, at least on the ice, right? I live in an action based world. Yep. Um, you can, you can do all the, uh, personal development you want, self-actualization. You, you can read the books, you can do the meditation, but honestly, the only thing anyone cares about is the on-ice play. Right. Um, that's what's evaluated and that's what's the, the forum that I live in. And if I had to boil down what are, I don't know, maybe you can help me. The, the word I want to use is focus points, but it, it was less than like something you focus on was like, uh, get to ready posture, like pay attention when you come off the bench. So it's really, it's, yeah, so, it, so, it's really things to, it's ways to not, to not add on. It's re, so it's really taking focus away in terms of, in terms of pseudo focus, right? And trust, and trust it. Cause, cause again, it's, it's, uh, the mindset we talk about, it's, if you're, it takes a, it takes a lot of focus to get to that state. So it's, it doesn't dismiss the part of like, of, of scrambling around trying to accumulate things. Cause the process of trying to do that is when you finally are like, oh, geez, like I'll, I'm never going to be able to, you know, it's, you, you realize it's like, yeah, what, what am I trying to, there, there's too much. So you just, you know, you kind of give up, laugh at yourself and then, but you still keep the relative parts. So it's not to say that process isn't worthwhile. Um, but the more you understand the process, the more you can consistently add that into your game over, over the course of a season. Right. Whereas in the past, like maybe it's like you occupy that state that you occupy that space mentally, maybe eight times a season instead of like 50. That's a big difference, right? And so I would say, and then your play becomes a byproduct of that. So it's like the results sort of come, they, they, like a boat wake, they come behind it, right? So it's like the water settles after. So it's not to say like you can't hang your hat on it, but it's like you sort of just trust that you're making, the, wherever you go, the wake is, is in proportion if you're there, right? Well, and that's where one of the key points I want to be able to kind of tease out of our podcast either for the listener was, I would maybe go in the class of, uh, you know, where uh, teammates or coaches would say th- he overthinks the game. Connor overthinks the game and, and newsflash, like hockey's just a platform through where, where a lot of my personality traits come out. It wasn't just hockey where, you know, overthinking existed. It was just the one that was most compet- most um, competed with in, in terms of and, and evaluated by others. <laughs> so I overthink in other areas of my life, but no one has a fucking problem with it. Uh, because it's not what I get you know, necessarily paid to do. And what I would say is together we actually thought more and thought through the overthinking in order to arrive at a position to be able to not have to, right? Instead of arm wrestling the entire time, the thought process that I was right. thinking. Well, it, so part of it too is then it, it's sort of like, putting some humor on the, of how much you overthink instead of making it judgmental. Cause then there's a thinking about your overthinking, which then there's a conflict about, right? So it's kind of like, it's like, let's say you have a hundred darts in your hand, right? 
you know, and you have, it's like, you, you're not going to just throw, you're not going to wait until you're ready to maybe hit the bullseye and throw one. You're, you start throwing them. And then as you get to hundred, you start bring it, narrowing it in. Right. So it's like, part of it's like knowing the first like 50 throws are going to be absolute like all over the map. But it's like, you can't just sit there with one dart waiting to throw it because when you do throw it, like, let's say there's like, you know, again, let's say take your lifespan as, as time, right? It's like in the darts, you know, uh, represent, let's say the darts represent the years of your life. It's like, you're not going to wait and just to throw one just because like the, in the beginning, it's like, so all of the throwing of the darts is what allows you to, to sort of sculpt the clay, right? So if you, if you don't, if you don't do that part of it, um, so because you know, you can do that part, you then don't, you don't, it has a lighter tone to it. So even that part becomes interesting and you don't overthink the overthinking. And that's really, I would say the key to overthink because it's not, you, you are not an overthinker. I would actually say people who say that are, are, are under thinkers because I mean, the fact that they say you over, you know, again, so it's like people take things very literally. So it's like, yeah, like you said, hockey is your biggest sample size, right? So obviously it's like, okay. He overthinks hockey. It's like, no, every, you do everything how you do anything. So it's like, it's not that he overthinks. So you're not out there thinking like, oh man, like left wings over there. Right? Like, it's like, no, the game happens too fast. Just, you're, you're not even overthinking. You, you're just, you're, um, you're in a state of tension. Like when you're, when you're in a state of tension. So it's not that you're actually overthinking. I would actually say your, your, your nature is blocked by that tension, which goes to thinking about um, outcome. Right? <laughs> yeah, I like that. I like that. <laughs> Try to sit with that one for a second. I thought uh, I, was, I was entirely prepared on our podcast today to get stubbed a couple times. Um, Me too. So this is example number one. <laughs> so what would you say together, because now we've played what? I've played uh, 11 NHL games and a handful of American League games before that. What would you say has been the most challenging or fun part of working together thus far? So, uh, well, I would say... Um, Let's pivot to that. So it's, it's interesting, but I would say it's not that I, I need a challenge. I need, you, need, you need an engagement level, right? So it, it's hard to be engaged in something if, it's, uh, if there's no sense in doing it, right? Like, and you know that. So it's like, so as a... So now to, to, again, to use words because coach and player, we can use those because we know they're simplifications of, of something. So it's, you know, so now we can use those for the simplification of this conversation. So as a coach, it's like if the player isn't actually interested in the things in, if they're not interested in the whole, right? And like, I mean, again, you, I think we talked about your like one or two NHL players with the podcast. So it's like, you're doing, like when you started the podcast, it's like, you're doing that because you're, you're investigating life, right? You, again, you don't quite know that, right? You're always being sort of pulled by, you're being pulled by something you don't know and you make all sorts of decisions on, on that. So right away, it's like, it's like all right, this, you know, so think about myself. It's like, well, I had, I've, I don't, it's like everywhere I've gone, I've had a lot of success. So it's like, well, this is getting boring. Just like in terms of it just being literally hockey because it's like, that's how people take literally. So it's like the more I've, the more I've uh, used all of it inside of pockets, you know, that's kind of what, you, that's what you're trying to do. So it's like, we kind of connected, I would say, as we we're both more ready to uh, use everything inside of, you know, the vehicle of, of hockey, right? Instead of just trying to like, you know, only put hockey things in hockey, because it's impossible. It's impossible to, every time you try to uh, make yourself shorter to not like smash through the ceiling, right? It's like, you end up, you end up like doing nothing well, right? So I would say that's, the, that's a yeah. difficult part about people who are, who are created by temperament and that are, that are, that have a high, high intuition, um, and, and, are, and have a level of abstraction to them, um, in, ter in terms of how their mind works in their mind, you know, so your mind works very laterally, but you, you know, one thing I, I said to you before, it's like, I jump around, like I've already been, just in this point, I've been jumping around. You, you have a, you have the ability to take abstraction and like actually put it into lanes on the highway and like, and like go, right. Which is a really, I would say really sort of evolutionary thing because we're, we live in a very, a vaguely industrious society, right? Like we're producing, we're producing something that's vaguely product right now. Right. It's like intellect, it's abstract, yeah. but it's not like it's an actual thing. So someone has to put the, someone has to be like, all right, we're doing it this time where, you know, you have, there's a, there's a logistics to it. We're not just having a conversation. Right. So, um, 
a lot, I would say a lot of these types of conversations don't ever get to, to people's ears, right? So I think, uh, again, your, your ability to sort of take that and actually and stay on the gas instead of just like going around, taking every turn you see, which I, you know, every single, every single rabbit hole, you can't go down. Otherwise, you'll, you, you get nothing done. So I would say that's, um, I would say we, we connected because that's sort of like, it's sort of almost like a puzzle piece type thing, right? Because I would, I would say you've helped me with, you've helped me with that a lot, just in terms of how I, again, you, you're pulled by also the thing, the gaps you need, right? So even as a coach, like, well, I need, it's like, well, I need some of that in, in my sort of framework, right? And you needed some, I would say the thing you need the most is to actually uh, be encouraged to be you <laughs> and to not, you know, and to realize what you are, that you're sort of getting, that you're blocking to not smash your head through the ceiling when you walk in, you know, when you walk into a metaphorical room, right? Well, and so, so it's interesting, right? Um, I felt like we had met sort of at the perfect time of a full circle. You, you, you kind of like to use like the, the lying down number eight or the infinity sign, right? In t- terms of the way things work, things can mean. Well, things. I like it up. I like it upright, but yeah. Because you do like it upright. I uh, thought you'd C, use C it level is the intersection. Laterally. Well, no, C, C, C level is the intersection because there's always, there's the downward part. So I would say I met you at the bottom of the eight. Like when you, so you're coming back up. Right. And, and so that's that where I felt, like, I felt like, I felt like I had engaged in this journey of curiosity, we'll call it. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the podcast maybe, um, you know, really ties into that uh, just by name and, and, you know, that, that's what it's called and that's what it was born out of. Um, but that part of me and part of my life used to uh, feel like noise. Mm-hmm. It, would, it, would, it was something in the way of my hockey goals, right? Like I, I, I need, you know, this wide ranging thought. I need this creativity to just, you know, dull itself, um, you know, so I can go out there and just play hockey. And so, you know, then I was at a, at a point in my career that was, that was, you know, multiple years in a row where uh, hockey was not, again, engaging to use that word, uh, you know, because I was into the lineup, I was out of the lineup, I was injured. I had a lot of time to think of, okay, hockey has ruled my entire life up until this point. We've, you've talked about this on other podcasts, how, you know, really we're professionalized at the age of 14. I mean, my, I'm in the summer. Uh, my daily routine is exactly the same as it was <laughs> yeah, uh, when I was 14 or 15. Just now I get paid uh, right. versus, you know, I used to pay somebody to, to help me do it. Right. right? Um, and so I felt like I was on the way up in terms of I, I had finally all of that had given me an opportunity to evaluate, OK, if hockey is my life and hockey is sort of on pause or it's in this gray area, or, or it, I wasn't even like playing well or playing bad. I just wasn't playing at all. So there was, you know. Right. There was almost no feedback. Um, and I, I was able to be really crafty with my time and the resource available in terms of what I wanted to investigate, what I wanted to, you know, build my life around. Now, you know, this, I wasn't going to, you know, blow my life up and, and retire from hockey, but what I knew was my relationship with self and with career needed to be tailored a little bit. You know, the, the, the fire was burning too hot. It was, you know, the acid was, you know, ruining the container, that kind of thing. Um, and so on the way up of that figure eight, I felt like I just needed a pat on the ass at the right time. Right. But like, yes, Connor, you can, you can download and integrate everything you've been thinking and swirling about and walk into every single room, every single time, knowing that this is who you are and what you can be. Right. Well, so I would say it's, it's not as much a pat on the ass as it's more of a, uh, in front of the, front, front of the face, like, Hey, wake up. Like, don't forget, like, <laughs> here, like, <laughs> don't forget, like, oh, don't forget what you are, <laughs> you know? So that's again. So, uh, um, I would say when you're high, when you're, when you are an intuitive person, you, and things work like even the way you, you and call them at the way you and I met, it's like you are presented with the platform you need at the right time. So you needed I would say the time where you weren't playing and had time, probably for the first time in a long time where you didn't have both thinking and playing. So you were, you were forced into the sort of the inner reflection part. And that's part of the, that's part of the second wave down. Cause with anything, it's like the eight, like think about the anatomy of an eight, right? If you start in the middle. So it starts with, you go up first, right? Then you go down, but the, the first down is still above, but it's going back down. And then the hard one is that, that next, the ne- next one's down again, and then back up to start. Right. And then after you complete that eight, you move on to a new one. So I would say you were, you know, as you're coming, kind of coming 
hockey starts by bringing the first part and then then all of a sudden it gets too complicated too um there's too much attachment to it in the without understanding what like why you're attached to it why you play because the reason why people are drawn to anything is because the way they feel when they do it so you start that's how you start when you start playing hockey right then all of a sudden it gets too professional so it goes down because now it's like well i don't really like the way i feel when i do it but i like doing it so now it's like you know now you're stuck in a abusive relationship because you you love it and you hate it at once right and that's a and it's your main and it's your thing right so especially uh and, and i think sports are really important for for teens and, and kids especially because you do need a little bit of uh again a, a pseudo identity just to like to give you a, a runway to actually think otherwise you sort of just like don't really get past that phase right and you see you see it with kids all the time it's so sad people give up on kids way too quick there's there's no such there's no bad there is no bad kid only bad teacher um which is a karate kid quote in some fat not not word for word but something like that which i genuinely believe and i but i believe the same thing with people in general it's just a matter of how much is covering them right so but most people are when they go down that second one right so that's like people usually hover between the middle and then like going down on that like next part of the eight because i think it's a circle yeah because yeah. it's, unco- it's so uncomfortable right like it's really hard because you're you're up you're maintaining your life still right but you're going through this sort of internal process right which is just which is more grueling than any external process in, in, in a different way right um so but if you actually once you break through it and you sort of see that you know the swing every things come into your life that you need to pull you up so i would say it's more of a mag ma- it's, it's more it's not me pushing it's more pull right because it's like i'm standing at the back of the start like with my legs crossed like this like you know like <laughs> like uh come on you like you're like this remember you've been here like uh two times now like this like this is you from the start um and now when you get back to it you have all the things you gained on that loop or on the, yeah so you t- when you tie the loop so i would say that's i just sit in that spot and wherever people are in the process of their eight i sort of shape into I'm a mirror <laughs> so but how do you act as a mirror how do you become the mirror how, why is it given you're a hockey coach yeah you know I've, I've been on the ice quotation marks <laughs> right yeah i'll do double quote i'm on the ice for the first time this summer actually tomorrow um yeah my skates will fit so uh bless my ankles i'm gonna try to do uh some ice in that after but anyway um I know, and we've talked about, you know, certain influences of yours, um, some of whom have become influences of mine. I listened to the last 30 hours of podcasts I've listened to have all been Alan Watts uh, lectures. And um, why do you engage with that work? Why, why are you drawn to it? Why do you find it? It's clearly you must like it if you, if you engage with it as much as you do. I know I do. That's, you know, flat out you know, the reason why I listen to those, you know, type of voices and podcasts and read those books, I've handed them to people and they drop them and go, I don't, this is dull, no interest. <laughs> um, so on, on some capacity, it's, you know, I'm kind of chosen for it. Um, and I imagine you are too. So, well, so I would say the first thing is, so I brought up Alan Watts to you like maybe a week ago today, maybe less. Right. And you've already, you've already gone through almost like all, like as You've a, you're a sponge. I've got at least 20 hours so far. So, so you and I both learn very quickly, right? So it's like, you, I mean, I talked to you on the phone like a uh, few days ago and you were, you tell me that you've been listening to the podcast and I just like briefly dropped his name at the end of our call, right? Um, and I was going to send you some, you know, some starters, but you didn't, I didn't. And you still, you found the starters yourself, right? So you didn't actually need mm-hmm. me to send them to you, Right. You found the you found the probably the cleanest way to to go about it on your own um, without me sending it to you, which is why I don't I typically wait to to answer requests so to speak because it's like they'll, you'll probably figure out in the interim what you did, um, but then you're talking about it as it's like I'm like hmm, he must have I'm thinking you listen like one you're like talking about like concepts I you know that I know have must span over a bunch I'm like how many of you listen to <laughs> you know um, <laughs> <laughs> but so I was actually uh, Alan Watts was brought to me by Ron Rolston at Providence who is one of my um I would say you have different types of mentors you have, you have, they, mentors sort of or people come into your life at the right time if you're if you commit to life and, and I would say that's what I guess to sum it up you first make the commitment to life you make the commitment to you make the commitment to God, to love, to growth, right? 
Like that's it, plain and simple. You, you have to trust something. You have to trust that you can't know everything and understand everything, right? So you have, you have to trust the ocean. You have to trust, you know, the rhythm of the ocean, right? Um, and if you do that, I do think things come into your life when needed. So Ron, um, Ron was a huge influence on my life, but he, he mentioned Alan Watts to me. I'd never heard of him in my life before that. So um, I just, you know, I saw a few, well, actually here's how it started because it wasn't just like random. I had, um, it was a few quotes that I had from Alan Watts that I was uh, showing him. And he's like, you know, and I only saw them because I liked the words of them. I didn't, you know, even know who Alan Watts was. So they, he just happened to be off of the quotes, which is how I look at things, which is the cool part, right? Because like, then it's like, you know, he, he, you know, tells me more about him. And I'm like, oh, then I open up, you know, this whole thing of like, oh, wow. Like, I, I don't even know the words I liked. I didn't even know who they were from. I didn't know who they were from. So I usually are, I usually, that's usually the order things go for me. It's like, I find the subject after after the, the substance, right? Um, so therefore, I, I don't, I, I, everything is sort of very equal to me in the sense of like, I don't get enamored by nouns, right? Um, so, there, so then, you know, so that there's a level of trust built into anything because you, you came upon it by its nature, right? By, but you came upon it by what it actually is, not who it is or what it is. Like, or, or I, when I say, you came about it by how it is, not what or, or who, because those don't really matter. Yeah, it's almost like finding the song before you knew it was on the top 50 charts. Right. And, right? And like, uh, exactly. how many times have you done that where you're like, no, the song is good. So now that you already go in with that preconceived notion, <laughs> you're like, well, it must be if everyone else thinks it is. So I'll learn to like it. Exactly. Well, that's why it's, um, you, have to say, you have to keep a little bit of the literal blindfolders on because everyone's, we're so, because of where we have every, access to everything, we know too quickly what people think of things. And that, which is fine once you get to a certain point in your own personal development, but most people have not got to the point. Well, I don't want to, I don't, when I say most people, I mean y younger, right? Like, well, older too, but <laughs> I don't, I don't, I'm not trying to just, I'm just going to use that for simpl simplicity's sake. I'm not trying to say it. people, all people are stupid and um, haven't got to the point where they don't know they're being influenced yet by something, right? So that, that kind of goes back to the, the humility of knowing you don't know, right? So we... We're influenced by others' opinions, but we don't know that's happening. So we have to both leave room to know that, to know that that may be happening. Because if we know that, we're gonna, then we'll actually look to see, okay, what do I actually think about this? Because there's probably a good chance that I'm being influenced by other influences, right? Like same with me giving you a recommendation. It's like, you have to, you have to try to think about what parts of it, right? Uh, and I would say that I, I'm, I would say I'm pretty good at not at removing myself from the recommendation because I don't really give them often, right? Like how many people have I recommended in that, in that fashion, right? Um, so I recommended his content at, uh, based off the style of delivery, right? So, um, but how many times like when you do get sort of a suggestion, it's like you then put the, you associate the person or where you got it from, that becomes a little bit attached too, right? And that's why we have a hard time with, uh, even people get, or players get stubborn with skill, like uh, certain techniques and stuff because like someone taught it to them that they like. It's like, they're not, the person who taught them isn't the technique. And technique is, is actually not real. It's, it, or it's, it's not universal. It's, technique is, a, is, a, is another word for execution, which may look different, 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 based off. Based. So it's, the technique is not a personal thing. But, you know, everyone has uh, t coaches, teachers, and people in general, they, they, they're, People cling to their intellect, their intellectual property, which in most mythos, most literature, the devil is, and Satan is usually actually represented by the intellect, very smart and cunning, not, not some like, you know, a stupid little monster that's going to like eat you. It's, no, it's, it's actually you and it's, and it's the smartest part about you, right? And because it's really easy to get, to, to fall in love with our own creations, especially when they're good, right? Because we can, we can matter of fact, but yeah, you know what, like that's, like I'll, I'll, I'll say it's like, what I Look at my kosher. It's like, yeah, like I'm fucking good. Like, like, like things go much better when I'm there than when I'm not. That's a matter of fact. So the heart, but you can, you have to know that's happening and like sort of try to start to rip yourself off from it, which is where the time comes in. Cause you, if you don't have time to think about that, like really deeply and, and like really sit with it, you're never going to actually do it because your ego is, is again, it's, it's so, it's so brilliant at sneaking back in where however it can, even if it's like in a covert way that it's like, you have no chance if you're not, if the real you isn't, at least, if someone isn't at least reminding you like, hey, don't forget, 
Like it's that simple. That's all it takes, right? Someone just, someone just needs to like bump into you so you pause for a second, right? And if you do that, it's like, oh yeah, oof, like, you know, and that, and, but that part's necessary too. So it's all good. Because <laughs> if you don't forget, it's funny. I, was, I, I, had, I had one of those moments about an hour ago. I was eating lunch and I'm sitting at home and I just gotten home from, uh, from training. And the reason I've listened to so much Alan Watts podcast now is I'm living at my in-laws. Uh, so I have an hour drive to the city. So I've just been able to crush these podcasts yeah. nonstop every single day, an hour there, an hour back. And what I would say is what some of our work felt like was I, I was eating lunch today. I had uh, grass fed uh, ground beef and uh, potatoes I'd made up, peppers and like this salad, which was a pretty standard lunch for me. But I knew that our podcast was coming up and I had to take the dog out and I knew Lexi was going to be home with Charlie soon. So I was eating I'm, and I'm eating like kind of quick, which I don't you know, normally do. And then all of a sudden I like, I'm eating so fast. Like I had like, like I came above back into like realizing what I was doing. I was like, I was like an animal grazing for a <laughs> moment. And, and like, so what I, what I really appreciate, I guess in our work is, and I've thought about this a lot. I can't remember where I, I heard this quote. And again, you know, maybe the substance before the subject or the subject rather before, I forget what you Sub, said. Substance before but, the, um, the subject. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> was, it was like, you can either look at mankind as a bunch of angels, you know, engaging with each other and be like extremely disappointed, or you can see us, uh, you know, as a bunch of evolved monkeys and be like super impressed. Right. And so like, I hear that and I'm like, well, actually, you know, maybe we're both like, may maybe we can be like really conscious in who we are and, and who we want to be. And we can, you know, b big mind, you know, or we can be, you know, kind of animalistic. I'm hungry. Uh, you know, how, like how complex of a think are you when you got to go pee? Like, <laughs> like <laughs> man, I've, I've all I've got to do is think about going to the bathroom. You know, and like you have these bodily, you know, animalistic needs that, you know, that these bodily functions that don't necessarily leave you. Um, and I think you've done a really nice job helping me remember, I guess, the whole picture and then remembering how easy it is to like dip into both and that it's okay to, you know, dip down and come back up and it's okay to be up and be fearful that eventually you'll come down. But understanding that entire thing is sort of like, I guess I'll do this, the figure eight. Well, you, if, uh, you've been outside when it's raining before, right? Yes. You've been outside when it's not raining, right? Yes. Af so after a few times of it raining, you're, well, I, well, I like rain, so I'm using it as a sort of positive in this, in this. I actually metaphor. like the rain too, personally. <laughs> but it's like, you know, cause it's, it, it's a, it's a little bit of a, there's a cleansing th element to it, but you, when it's not raining, you know, it's going to rain at some point. So it's, that's, and that's, so that's sort of the faith of the, when you commit to, when you make that commitment to life, that's, that's sort of what you're committing to. It's like, yeah, it's going, like, it's going to rain some days. And it's going to not, I like, so I don't have to act on, so you, that, and I actually, and I'll, I'll make you define the word, uh, con being conscious. Cause I, I think that's, that's becoming one of our buzzwords in society where it will be vaguely be just no one know what it actually means. But, but it's a really important word because it's, well, what is conscious? What is consciousness? What is, because then it gets mixed up like conscientiousness and uh, awareness and attentiveness. And so I'm going to push you on, on that because I think it will be a good exercise or an interesting one for the, sh for the show. Um, and a good exercise for you to actually have to, to actually put the substance behind, you know, the subject of, of the words you use, right? Which we've talked about is really, it's really important. So, um, that's when it's like you're aware of the future and you're aware of the past, but you don't have to, you, so, but you're not driven by them if you're, but you're not, you're not also not blocking them out. So that, I guess, so that's probably the, the, the way I say it. It's like, you, you're aware that it may rain or may not rain. So, you know, rain exists. So it's like, it's on your, it's on your sort of, uh, you know, it's on your internal list of things that you're, that you can prepare for better each time. So it's like, but you, but if you, again, you're, you don't have to think about doing that so much. You, for, you have to think about occupying the space of that mindset, right? That if you focus on just that, everything else falls apart or, or everything else falls, un, falls sort of in it. So, you know, when you talk about your head, you kind of point upward. So, which, uh, which shows that's how you sort of visualize it, right? I look at it more of a sphere. Every, every point of a sphere is a center, right? So it's, it's more of, it's, uh, it's expanding out and you're always pushing on the edge of it, right? 
it, to sort of see like where the boundaries are. And every time you do that, the, it doesn't go back to the, where it's, it, it doesn't go back um, to its last place. It always stays at the furthest point it's been, right? But the whole thing expands into width. And the width supports the, the height. And the height is more, I would say, that's more the concrete part. The, like, right, like the, that's more the, the part that's a little more uh, consciously sought out. But you can't build on top. You can't build up without building the width building and out, yeah. obviously the depth, right? So let's start with conscious. What does that mean? Or the, I'm sorry, uh, conscious. You said conscious. I think it's like a stimulus, like a, a moment where you're, you're recognizing that something's happened and then your response. So like in that moment, if you recognize that there's a moment, right? So um, give an example. We were trying to eat outside uh, with Charlie the other day, ran into a hostess. It was a nightmare miscommunication, um, was not going to work out. And now we've got an infant that, you know, is going past his feeding window and, and, and all the things that come with that. He, he might sleep poorly the next time, right? And so it was like, Stimulus was, you know, the event sort of at the restaurant and it was like, okay, if what I'm nervous about is my kid freaking out, what I definitely can do is guarantee he's going to freak out if I freak out. <laughs> so, so in that way, like you actualize your fear by, you know, openly, um, not looking at your fear, not like putting it in this place and being like, okay, I see you, you need to sit down. Okay. Um, and Connor's going to handle this for a second. Right. And so that's what I would say is, as conscious and, and well, so that uh, actually, that led me to it. That was, that's perfect though. Cause now that triggered a thought for me that, which I haven't thought of before. What you actually did was, so the, the being conscious at that, in that span of time, actually it did. So it, the conscious you, that, that is, um, again, it, that's the part that's sort of, um, Sh that shaped more was actually removing everything that's in front of Connor acting spontaneous and uh, spontaneous Connor acts with all of the wisdom it has from everything it's ever done and everything it has and things it hasn't done too. So it, you're at that. So the, that person to so you were the, the, so I like to, I like to use the word, the observer, the conscious is sort yes. of the observing, but it doesn't observing just very matter of factly and then removes everything in the way of reality. Like, Right. Like you took off, you essentially took out the controllables. Like, well, all right, what definitely isn't going to help? So it's usually like, that's usually the process. It's actually removing the illusionary compartments and leaving the compartments that actually that, you know, like, like you said, like if you have to take a piss or you're hungry. It's like, those are real human compartments. Right. But like yep. we build a lot of little ones that like, that just become clutter. Right. So you're moving everything in the way so that Connor can act sponta spontaneously and you can trust Connor to do that. And that's a process. And that's a continuous process of growth growth. And spontaneity is actually something that needs to be growth, grown out, like, a, like almost like the shape of a V, right? You have to start, and you, you have to pre, uh, present it to kids, but um, with, without them knowing, but in proportion, right? So that's sort of like, again, like you'll, you'll trust yourself to the, to, to the flame, so to speak, um, the more you do that in, a, in, a, in more, situation, more and more complex situations as a, as a sort of process of growth, right? Which is why... Just asking what you mean by that is important because now you probably understand it more too. Well, I I want to I want to push back on what how you engage with the subconscious because I think it's something that you do on purpose, mm -hmm. which is funny because now you're consciously engaging <laughs> with the subconscious, right? And there's a that's a you know oxymoron of sort. Right. Um, but a lot of times as a player, right? And I felt this. Um, you play your B game or you play your B minus game. And we've talked about this, right? In the NHL with the schedule and the travel and the injuries and the, you know, whatever else, um, you know, an 82 game schedule kind of has to present. So, you know, sometimes, uh, how many times you hear this from a player? Oh, I just didn't have it tonight. Well, I, 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 what didn't you have? I didn't have my legs. I had no juice. I was tired. Right. But I, but I, I gave a good effort. I worked hard. And, and so you kind of wipe your hands clean of it. And a player likes to think like, oh, I am not those games. Like those games do not, ident don't, don't, um, Define, define you. me, yeah. but they want to look at their best games and go, no, that defines me. And I just need to be that. If I can be that more consistently, then I'll be the player I actually am. But these things are holding me back. You know, coach's opinion, uh, you know, the weather outside. I didn't like the pillows at the JW Marriott, what, whatever else, you know, comes up. So like how, 
when you're working with a player, when you're working with me, do you look at the subconscious? How do you elevate it? How do you, how do you get both of those to yang and yin, like work together? And I use the Alan Watts yang and yin pronunciation instead of the yin and the yang. <laughs> I, I, uh, yeah, I, I, I caught that. Um, he's forever changed the way I say that. Um, like that. Or that, that's like that just, well, that's a subconscious thing. So now that, now that exists to me because you just put it, you formulated it. I never like, uh, you know, now that you say it now, it's like, oh yeah, he does say it that way. But I didn't really, yeah. so I knew it, but I didn't know it. My subconscious knew it, right? So, so all we're doing, right? So this is, this is actually an exercise of the subconscious because what we're doing is we're talking and we're sort of pulling out words from each other um, or really in unison um, because the, the platform is the dynamics to do that, right? It's not really me and you. It's, you know, we have a, we have some, it's a, so it's like, it's not one in one, right? Because then, then you can't see. It's actually, you turn the cards the other way and you open them up. It's one in one make, and then leaves room for the three. It, it's the same, you know, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, right? The, the Spirit is only there with, the, you know, it implies that there's two that are separate, but it's all the same thing. So we create the space, right? By becoming, the, by observing the space, not, not trying to, not trying to be the game. So, well, to, to take it back a step, what I first do is restart the definition. You said, you know, for instance, a player uh, identifies with their game when they play, when their game approximates X, Y, and Z, right? Like something that people tell them is good. Because in reality, it's like, let's say they didn't get like a point or like a coach and take a game. Would they think they played well? <laughs> like, like maybe, but it's like, and if they did, it's really the, how they felt about their play. Like it's how they felt playing. So it's a perception. Right, exactly. So which could be shaped or not shaped by, by, you know, out, by literal outcomes, or it could just be sort of new. It, But Either way, um, so right away the, ch the chase becomes all right. What becomes what you did in that game instead of instead of who instead of you, right? It's, it becomes something outside of yourself. But it's like you were the one who played the game. So right away it's like we come back because because what you do to start is you build off of that presupposition, right? As an athlete, you build off your your past, right? Like you take the like you said, it's like you take the games, the film. And it's like and you try to build off of that thing. Without, without going back and actually setting the actual, the, the, what the initial question is, and then going back, because it doesn't take very long, because it's not like you have to start all over. It's like you go right back to that question, but now all of a sudden you remove all the clutter, right? And now it's like you can actually see the question clearly, because it's not that a literal game, right? So it's like, the, like even when we've done film, it's like actually not, the film doesn't matter that, what day, that it was yesterday or what zone it's in. It's like, it's, it's not to be taken super or even literal. even a player. Right, exactly. Like it doesn't even need to be me playing. Or, exactly. You know. I, remember, I remember what was so cool once, uh, you, that, and this is a good, this is a good um, example of memory and subconscious when you're paying attention. We were doing film, we were probably on the phone for like, I don't know, maybe an hour and a half. It was uh, versus Pitt, versus Pittsburgh. Yep. And uh, I, we, we were probably at the end of the, end of the conversation and something from the beginning at the end, you remember, you remember that Latang did um, something that we were talking about in that future part of the conversation. But your, mem your subconscious went back, plucked that information that so we didn't talk about it then, but it, we watched it, right? So it observed it because you were actually there, right? So this, this, it takes it in and then it, became, then it connected dots with a pattern, right? Because usually it takes um, probably three times of something becoming like, huh, that looks familiar, right? So that, must, that look, starts to look familiar. And you probably like, oh yeah, Latang did that. Like, let's go back to, I think it was like, you actually, now I'm talking as if I'm you. You said like, go back to like, I think it's like, you know, early in the first, like, uh, um, I think Latang is a good example of this. And like, there was like a probably a minute shift where he did that. And, but you pulled that, you weren't trying to, uh, um, you weren't trying to attain that information and you weren't trying to recall it either. It just came, it just came, came, came forward. It's like, where did that come from? Merged, yeah. That's your subconscious, right? And part of it is because we're just watching, we're watching the film, not, we both understand the film's not literal, which if you do that, you then can actually look at, you can actually look at it super seriously because serious isn't, because serious becomes sincere and it's actually, and it becomes engaging. So it's like, it doesn't mean you stop talking about hockey. You can actually talk about, you can actually break through that threshold. I would say that, that players stop at and people in general stop at that that part where they, where they know a lot, right? And then the second part is again, trying to unknow it all so you can actually use it, right? And that's, that's an example of it. What does that mean when you say the video is not literal? Because I understand it in the context that you use it, but for the listener, mm -hmm. they, what does that mean? So 
it does. So let's say like, you know, we're watching, let's say we're watching film So take a defenseman. Let's say uh, they're in neutral zone. Puck comes up the board, sort of like a generic uh, sort of um, re- neutral, like neutral zone regroup. You sort of like get a weird puck off the wall, but not a lot of pressure. You kind of like, you know, you turn back past your partner or whatever. Like how many times does that happen? In all, and not just in that spot, but how often does that sort of thing happen in a course of hockey game? Right? Yes. So now, so you can take, so now we can just take that one thing and we can also then be like, okay, what, what if there was pressure? So now we can take one sample and scale it out to 30 examples instead of watching 30 things every time. That, so that is the accelerated learning, right? That's, you know, I, my, what, what I am, if I am to, if I am to say I'm good at something, it's learning because I can, I see one thing and learn 30 because it's like, all right, let's just put a few stipulations that happen also. Cause it's the same, it's the same time, speed, space, depth, dynamic that happens on the retrieval on D zone. Like even in the offensive zone, like, uh, depending on where you are, where you are, it's like, it's the same exact concept when you're playing pickup basketball, when you're playing, like playing soccer, it's the same concept, right? Just in hockey. So we can take out the hockey parts and, t- and leave the parts that, that the, the sub, the, the subconscious and the body actually no, because it doesn't know you're playing hockey. It, it, where the, the, the universal part is the invasion sport, right? It's like, there's an object that my, me and a group of people are trying to put somewhere and the other team is trying to do the same thing and not let us do it. That's an invasion sport, right? It's a, but, so it's the same patterns and concepts at the very, fu- well, elemental level. Because then that's the elemental level. Then hockey has its fundamentals, right? But under all sports, that's why I like three on three basketball is best for, you know, uh, half court for hockey players because they don't overthink the hockey part. They, so they actually have to learn how to move off ball to create, you know, because they, they know they can't really shoot, so they don't care to shoot, right? Where like, you know, so it's like, because it actually like ruins the game because you shoot and miss every time. So it's like, so might as well just keep the ball. You just want to have the ball right. as long as you can. So you yeah. start to actually understand possession because you're not rushing an outcome because you you're not attached to the outcome of that three on three pickup basketball game, right? It's just like you like playing because which is the same reason you like playing hockey to start. Um, that's it's a it's a challenge. You're in you're with and you're doing it with other. You're doing it coexisting within a group of people, and which which is again it's a that's an, those two things are engaging. So it's not it's not isolated. And you're you're doing it with you're competing. So that there's the second part of the, uh, the podcast, and there's a there's a curiosity in the sense of you're not you're you're sort of thinking when you actually play something that you've um, because even you played hockey a million times, but it's, you've never played hockey the same way twice. Like every like in the sense that it, well everything in life, even though you've done it, you've never done it that time. You know what I'm saying? It is once right. in a lifetime. everything you do it's yeah. once in a lifetime, right? So you're, with that said, there, there should be a level of curiosity. And um, to go back to the, you know, the, the Tuesday to find your life, it's like, if you can remember that, then you can string together Tuesdays. So let's use that as a hockey metaphor, right? So like the game where it's like, because you're going to have, you're, over 82 games, you're going to be Tuesday most of the time. So how is your Tuesday? Mm-hmm. Everyone, has, everyone is going to have their, their, Saturday, their few Saturday nights, so to speak. So now, I'm, well. So literally in metaphor. Well, so here, it's funny. I, I, there's this uh, commercial, you know, as, as things open back up and it's a guy walking with headphones uh, through a grocery store. And it says, if you think, you know, grocery shopping is fun, you know, you need to get to a nice hotel immediately. And it's a hotel commercial, right? Like they, you know, they, they skip out and they go off the diving board and they do this and they do that. And it's, and it's a blast, which is cool, which is great. But like, you know, maybe go to a hotel a weekend a year. Maybe you go for a week. Maybe you go two. Right. And no, right? And no like, one's using that. Your life is not vacation. Disgusting. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you hate it. But your life is not vacation. Right. So you, like, I, I love the grocery store. Commercial. They're just trying to make a buck. What's I lo- that? I love the grocery store. I love it. And, and if, and this is what you helped me wake up to was I, I was used to and, and told, um, you got to play the game with, with passion. Like it's, it's gotta be, uh, you know, everything to you, like, like, like hate to lose, like live and die by this game. Right. And, and, and you can, when you're at least participating in it. Right. Yeah. But when you're on pause and you've got to watch, you've actually got to watch the reality you want to engage in so badly with, um, it's easy. It was easy. And I'm not saying it is easy for others, but it was easy to fall into a vanilla. And in, instead of a Tuesday, I didn't even know what day it was. Like I had no problem with like the routine and the mundane and the grind. I actually you know, enjoyed that, or at least enjoyed the status of being someone 
who uh, could go through that, you know, yeah. by teammates and, and through others. You like process. Um, you do. I do. Yeah. I do. And, and I want to engage with that process, refine it, evaluate it, see it, be back in it. Um, but I, I, th- I, I think that's what I've, I've found intriguing about you is you talked about seriousness, then sincerity. You approach life with such a sincerity that levity comes out of it. Like how, how do you get from serious to sincere to levity? Like, like how do you scale down that? Um, well, up, well, well, uh, the, the intro, well, it's kind of, you said, um, well, it's kind of interesting because I would say, like I said, you, you're, you, you in general like process. Now there, um, with process there becomes that, that's why I put, for instance, um, in PRS, the middle is reflect. So our practice reflect simplify. That's PR, you know, PR hockey. Which and that's is, your company, right? Yeah, if you go to the website, it's like, it's like, up, it says like updated, like, it's not updated. There's no, I don't even think there's content info on it. So it's, it's, <laughs> I have a website still, but it, yeah, doing business as PRS hockey. <laughs> um, all, 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 all listeners will get a 200% <laughs> discount for all. <laughs> yeah. For PRS. Like, com. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's like a, your plug. Exactly. It's, it's a pseudo business. Tell them I sent you. Peter will charge you double. Wow. <laughs> cash, cash, cash only. Uh, <laughs> um, but I cha- the, the reason I have, so it's practice, reflect, simplify. The reflect part is actually what you do after, like after a game, right? So like the game is part, yeah. if you can put the, the game inside of the process and not on the tail ends of it, I think it's easier, at least for me, to, to sort of, you, you look at the performance part, right? Because even a co- for a coach, I, that's how I treat it. It's like, um, so this kind of answers your question probably better, but I have a process and in my process includes reflection and, that's, and that is a more deliberate part. So I have a lot of deliberate parts inside of my, my you know, uh, spontaneity, right? But there's a, I, I also have deliberate parts and that, and that goes, and that's where, that's sort of the free will. So it, it, of, of knowing you're allowed to think, which is a very, it's a very mundane concept. Like, yeah, like I know that it's like, no, no, do you really know that? And that's what you have to do. It's like, um, when play, players usually people in general, well, it's a get, yeah, I know that. Cause it makes so much sense. How can you not know it? Right. It's like, you're allowed to think. It's like, yeah, no, it's like, no, no, no. you're allowed to think. Yeah, I know. No, no, no. Like you don't know. Like you're allowed to think. It's like, oh yeah, actually, shit. Like maybe I am. You know. So you have to actually push people past just the initial, the initial brush off because that's we do that myself included. We do that with a lot of things. Like right away, it's like we almost it's easy for things to go by us. But the good news is it always comes back around. So it's like if you miss something, it's like nothing. Who cares? It's gonna, it's, it will come back when you're ready for it. So that goes back to the trusting of the initial 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 commitment, right? To to the process of life. So, um, you know. You, you put the performance, so as a player, it would be game day. You put it, in the, you put it as, a, in, as just a part of the process, just like, like any other part. Now, right? You happen to be evaluated on that part, but if you trust that if your process, if the process on the whole, if you become, start to become a, a, a matter of fact and uh, sort, of, um, sort of keen and, and, and uh, I would say observant um, evaluator of your own process, right? in like in a sort of not in a non-charged non-emotional way then you start to audit you evaluate your process and you you have faith that over a sample size a lot of averages will play out and a lot of averages goes back to your process not your actual game all right everyone it's me again your host connor carrick thank you uh, for joining us for part one of the peter russo special um you know i'm not sure uh you know why i have such an affinity for him and i've allowed him to have two whole weeks uh, of coverage here on the Curious Competitor podcast, but I think I think he's someone um, that really walks the walk that way. And one of the things that you know really drew my interest uh, with Russo personally was um, I have a, a real appreciation for people who you know are very purposeful in the way they construct their life. Uh, in the way they go through it. And I don't know if I've met anyone as intentional with that as Peter on both a conscious and subconscious basis, right? So uh, I'll give you an example. So something we talk about a lot in hockey is um, you don't, Peter and I do, not in hockey in general, but you don't get to like disown, for example, your poor performances. Um, You are equally, you know, every player wants to throw out their A game 
and think to themselves, oh, like that's what I am. Like I am that A player. And if I can just get to that game more often, I'll have a better career. You know, I'll get all the accolades that come with being more consistent, more ice time, more pay, whatever. But as much as you are your A games, if those are, let's call them 10% of your efforts, you also have to sit there and pony up to your C games, right? So if those are the other uh, 10%. We won't even talk about uh, D and F because th- those are out there, but we'll call those flukes for the most part. We'll live on the bell curve where, you know, 10% of your games are C games, you know, 80%, and this is roughly, but 80% are sort of your your B games just with, with travel, uh, with injury, with how, um, you know, you're playing so often in the NHL. The energy level just, you know, sometimes isn't, if you're being completely honest, there for a consistent A plus game effort, uh, and then or, or execution rather, the effort's always there. But you know, sort of that subconscious execution where, because you're tired, you don't pluck the puck clean, or you know, your vision, your your you know, sort of the reflexes in your eyes aren't seeing it just right. And then ten percent of your A games, and uh, you know, something that you know Peter I think really understands as a coach is. Uh, for his players as well is that you are equally parts uh, your conscious self out there in hockey, what you're trying to do, what you're trying to focus on as you are your subconscious, Um, the plays you make under duress, the plays that uh, you make in traffic where you weren't totally positive uh, what angle or what speed, you know, the next four checker was coming at. And he will act as a mirror sort of uh, to see, you know, what's under there. So I'll give an example. (laughs) Russo and I did, uh, I was playing for Binghamton at the time this past year, we did a a video session and, uh, we were going to watch the whole game. I played like 32 minutes this game, which was exhausting in its own right. Cause I, I hadn't been, uh, other than bag skating, I hadn't been playing uh, to that degree. And the American league is a, is a very physical, very stop and start or any game. It's not quite the rhythm as the NHL. So the heavier minutes are, are, are just that in the American league, they're actually more tiresome, uh, I found. And, uh, there was a particular play. I came in, it was the first shift of the game and I, I had a good look and I thought we were going to watch the whole game. You know, I thought we were going to watch all the shifts and, and kind of tease out a couple of key points. And, uh, Russo, we, we couldn't stop. We were just talking. Um, and Russo was doing most of the talking, but he, we kept talking through this first clip. Uh, how I was holding my stick, how I entered the blue line, uh, where my posture was, uh, you know, where I was scanning, across the rink and, and why I end up taking the shot I did, which was you know, kind of a, a blueberry muffin. And, um, you know, the goalie was able to glove it pretty easily. We spent like an hour and a half just about on this one single clip. It was, it was we really beat it into a powder. And Russo asked me after, because we did end up coming to, you know, kind of two to three main points about uh, this particular clip that could apply like this was a micro play, but to the macro of, you know, what could apply to more plays in a game and almost every play in a game, uh, no matter where you are on the ice. And um, he, he kind of played this, this game with me. And uh, he's like, Connor, you know, what I was trying to do was, you know, I find you know so much about the game, and this is Russo talking to me, that you think all of those thoughts instead of just like letting them be there uh, in the back of your mind and pulling from them as you need. Uh, but it leads to this like mental busyness where you're, you're thinking about the game in segmented parts. Um, you're not, which is literally almost the, the anti uh, thesis or the, the opposite of, um, you know, flow state, right? Where the whole game becomes this one beautiful uh, sort of masterpiece. And he goes, and imagine, you know, Connor, if we had just, teased out the two to three points that we talked about today in the first five minutes of that phone call. Imagine all the energy we would have had left for the last you know, 125 minutes uh, that we had together. What else might we have discovered? And so it was a kind of a mirror exercise of what the opportunity cost is of, you know, thinking too much or overthinking or, um, you know, really letting uh, your intellect or your knowledge uh, get in the way of your skill and your ability instead of actually enhancing it. Uh, So that was one way, um, sort of one clue uh, in between uh, podcasts this week. One example of, uh, you know, something I've really enjoyed uh, in working with Peter. I thank you again uh, for your time and effort 
uh, to listen and, and to integrate uh, some of the lessons learned. Uh, again, admitted in the intro, I'll say it again. Uh, now, you know, very winding. Um, you know, we're just trying to put a lot of our thoughts on the table and, and see where things go. Uh, and then I will eventually end up uh, listening to this episode again and, you know, dialing down some particular things that I think uh, deserve more airtime uh, with Russo. So thank you again for joining me on my journey to become a more curious competitor. Please continue to like, uh, subscribe, comment goes a long way uh, for, you know, Colin and I and helping promote and continue the podcast. I'm, you know, very excited, possibly adding um, some, some very uh, targeted uh, sponsors. So if you start to hear uh, sponsor reads, uh, please support uh, them. I will only work with uh, what I would consider to be very natural and superb fits that way. Uh, but it'd be really cool to have the podcast, you know, sort of uh, sustain itself because I do uh, spend, you know, time and effort and, you know, financial resources to produce this podcast uh, and to create, you know, a sustainable sort of uh, uh, business model, I think was, was a dream of mine from the start. So kind of a cool reflective moment. Um, you know, everything hereafter will kind of be, you know, podcast 2.0. And I really appreciate um, all the sticking with me thus far. I'll see you again next week.